ahead and jump into it. Um, and as uh, Chris Bills is taking the first question and Josh is responding to it, I will go through and give everyone permission to record. So please continue to utilize that raise hand uh, feature and we'll get started. Chris, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, Josh. Uh, just first of all, I was just wondering if uh, you, you had any update on the two guys that were out on Saturday, Kip Keller and, and Musa Jite, and, and kind of their availability for, for this weekend's match. Yeah, they're both doing better. I think, um, you know, for different reasons, they were held out uh, of that last match and uh, they're both been in training the last couple of days. So they'll both be available for this game. Okay. And um, also, we just got a chance to talk to Sebastian Jersey. I asked him about his partnership with Alex Ring. I was curious about like how quickly that that sort of started to, to jump onto your radar, you know, once they started training together and and, you know, how much that's been a part of what we've seen with Alex kind of transitioning into his more attacking role as being able to play off of Sebastian and just that that partnership that they've got going. Yeah, I think we saw that right away last year when when Sebastian arrived as far as getting um, getting Alex a little bit further up the field and and having him in a little bit more advanced role. And, and, and again, Sebastian, good players always find good players and they're looking to combine with one another. And when you have Diego and Cecilio and Alex, and Pepe and Valencia and, and, and Maxi and, and all these guys in the attack, you, you start to see some combination play, which is nice. But the, their relationship, I think, has, has grown, um, you know, certainly as they've been around each other more. And, and, and we've had a, a good preseason to, to work through some more of that as well. But um, they're both very important players that um, give us, certain attributes in the attack that we like and and again they work hard and tirelessly defensively as well so on both sides of the ball those are two very responsible guys that are going to mean a lot to our success this year thank you chris we'll go to eric goodman with the austin chronicle eric hey josh so um this time last year not only did you have a new club but and a new squad but a squad that um because of covid couldn't could gather as much you know we talked a lot back then about um finding ways creative ways to forge that togetherness i imagine things have been a bit different this year and you have a lot of people returning who who know each other much better so um how how are you feeling that togetherness you know how much improved is it than it was this time last year yeah i think um i think it's drastically improved i think a lot of the credit goes to the players as well as as, as you know, as much as we work and we're together inside our training center and on the field, they've they've put it on themselves as well to do things off the field. We bring some of that as a staff and um, having families uh, come to games and having cookouts for everybody again to bring people together. But uh, the players have taken it on themselves as well off the field and and had some meals together and brought karaoke and and again, um, it's it's important to to focus when we are at work, but it's also an, an important aspect, the, the human aspect to, to relate and, and be around one another and enjoy each other's company and get to know each other better because uh, the season's long and it's a grind. And when these relationships are deeper than just uh, the training field, it, it, it makes, it makes for, for, for a great, um, a great relationship for the entire season. And, and we're trying to build, uh, you know, all of our guys into this um, idea of, of, of we're a family. And this is a big part of it. They, they got to show that their family on the field, when things are good and bad, but it, it, that those things are forged off the field as, 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 as much as anything. Who's the uh, best karaoke singer? I didn't get any feedback on that, but um, I'm sure we got some, we got some, some good ones, but I'll, 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 I'll do some research for you and, and try to let you know. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Let's go do a uh, Dennis De La Pena. Dennis. Hey coach. Um, you know, this time last year was such a different feel. We were asking you about almost anything, but soccer, it seemed like, because there were so many, first and newness that whole factor how different is it how much more calming is it to, to actually be able to focus on the soccer with this more talented more cohesive roster yeah I think it's good I, the foundation has been laid I think our, our identity and our style of play is is in place and and we want to get better at, at both ends of the field and we put a big emphasis on that in um in preseason and and again, building relationships, building uh, and you know, bringing in the new players and getting them up to speed with with the way that we work and what our expectations are. Um, so I think it's it's certainly in a much better place, and uh, we we expect that to help translate onto the field in a quicker way. But um, each game will present its own problems, and we'll prepare for each opponent in in, in its own way. But uh, the guys are fresh; they're they're obviously excited to get the season started and. And again, there's more focus on the soccer elements um, and, and as well as the off-field stuff. But uh, once the season starts, it's, it's good to get going and, and the intensity will ramp up. But, but it's much different than last year. You're absolutely right. And a quick follow. How different is it for you? Because Claudio had some good comments. He talked about how reflective you are as a coach. And there's just so much to learn that first year as an MLS head coach. 
how different do you feel and maybe what couple areas do you know that you're improved and different now? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that, that I reflected on individually for, for me as a coach, but as our group and, and looking at our game model. So um, I, I, I lean on Claudio for some of that insight as well and, and our coaches for feedback and coaches around the league. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's a big part of, of growing as a player and as a coach. You have to be honest with yourself, but it's also good to get input from others. Um, and again, I think I've, I've learned a good, deal, a good deal tactically of how we want to structure things and how we want to work through the week with our players. Um, but again, our players are in a different place. They have a, a pretty good understanding of what we're trying to do. So there's less teaching and, and probably more refining, which helps us dive right into to, to, to more precise actions and precise moments in the game. So um, from that standpoint, we, we feel pretty good about it. And we're looking forward to a competitive game here at home against, uh, against Cincinnati. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Thank Thanks, you. Dennis. Let's go to Roger Wallace. Roger. Hey, Josh, you mentioned it. it's a long season, uh, the way it's set up this year, but there's only one opening day, uh, your first opening day at home uh, in the two years. Do you sense it this week uh, with the guys that this is a, a special few days coming up? I think so. I think the fact that we had a preseason game against Atlas, against a very good opponent in Q2, really set the stage for, for what this game will look like and feel like. Uh, I think we were very fortunate to get a game in our home stadium and with our fans um, because it does prepare you. It's a different intensity when you play that preseason match um, comparing to any other preseason match that I've ever been part of in, in, in MLS as, as a coach or a player, um, it, it really creates a different vibe and a different intensity. And, and that was exciting to see. And the players' reaction and response to the fans and to the moment was, was very good. And uh, there was a lot of quality in that game, but just our intensity and, and our maturity within the, within the game, I thought was really good. So getting back to Q2 and getting in front of our fans is, is something that's extremely special and unique. And, and I, again, I think it's gonna be an incredible atmosphere and, and um, you know, an incredible first match of the season. Well, it, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be incredible weather. I mean, there, is it, does that change things and are certain guys a little bit better in bad conditions than, than others? I think it's it's certainly going to be part of the part of the storyline. Today was a difficult day at training, but again, our our ability to get out here, understand it's cold and windy, um, understand things aren't going to be perfect, but stick to the to the game plan and be able to perform. Um, those are things that are going to be important all year, whether it's warm out or whether it's cold out. So um, we'll keep training, and and our guys will be prepared for the for the weather, whether it's good or bad. But um, we, we, we understand no, no game is perfect. You got to be able to deal with the adversity within the game and, and, and make decisions based on what you're seeing and what you're able to execute. But, um, you know, we still expect it to be good enough weather for us to be able to play that we want to play. Thank you very much, Roger. Let's go to Laura at Telemundo. Laura, go ahead. Hi, coach. Um, I have a question. Last Friday, Claudio Reina say that the team was hoping to see the players earn the spot. For this season how do you plan to do that dynamic and if, if we're going to see like a lot of rotations to see that to be able to see that or how is it going to work for you um well we have a competitive group we have a deeper roster this year i think we come in with a bit more quality certainly than we had last year and, and much more character and leadership within the group so um, it, it comes down to performances and, and those, those decisions will be, will, will be for me to make throughout the week, what, what gives us and our team the best opportunity to win games. But, um, you know, having, having a squad that, that has quality and character and depth uh, is a good thing. The season's long and, and different opponents ask different questions and players form and health can, can come and go. But, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll try to run our best, you know, our best 11 each and every game. And, and again, I think we have enough depth and quality that if needed, we can, we can certainly go to the bench and still get results that, that are required. Thank you, Laura. We can go to Jorge. Jorge, go ahead. Okay. Hi, Josh. How are you? Um, I have, a, you know, a question. Um, some national journalists, uh, they, they put the team out of the playoffs on, you know, their uh, predictions. And also on, on, uh, on Las Vegas, we are 71, 75 to 1 for a championship. How do you feel? What are your, your, your thoughts? Your, you know, what, what do you think? I think there's an opportunity there for, uh, you know, for, for the betting fans to be able to, 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 possibly, um, to possibly make some money if, if the odds are that that stacked against us. It's a great opportunity. No, I think it's, it's part of coming into the season. I think everyone sees how we finished last year and where we finished. Um, if, if we looked at that, uh, certainly through our lens and, and even as, as the season concluded, we, we knew we had better, 
um, certainly better performances as we got Sebastian and as we got a striker with Musa. So I, I think there was a lot of optimism. And, and again, I think, you know, those, those opinions are, are fine. They're, they're part of, of, of what makes sport sport. And uh, we have the opportunity to, to utilize that message and that, that idea of what the, what the experts of MLS think and, and their predictions. And, and we'll use that as a little bit of fuel, but, but we're confident in what we're doing and, and we'll look to go out and perform each and every week. And, and, and the way you earn the respect uh, of, of not only your opponents, but the, but the pundits is, is to go out and perform. And, and that's what we expect to do. And that's what we plan to do. Is that, is that an advantage? You know, somehow they're not expecting and you guys don't have that pressure. Um, well, well, I think, you know, I, I think there's always pressure. This is professional soccer. So whenever you show up on game day, there's, there's pressure to perform. There's pressure to win. The expectation I think for both teams is they're going to show up to, to win a game. And uh, that comes with pressure regardless. So uh, again, I look at our group as, as a very hungry group and with plenty to prove and, and we have the quality and, and certainly the character to go do that. And it's, it's not to say the season won't be challenging. There's going to be challenges um, littered throughout the season, but, but we've got to be prepared for that and, and obviously continue to, to look for consistency. I think the biggest thing for us is, you know, build on our performances and, and, and look for consistency, but we got to win games. And I think that's a big part of, of what's going to put us, uh, you know, certainly in a, in a position for the playoffs and, and things that we want to achieve this season. Thanks, Jorge. Much appreciated. We have two time for two last questions. We'll go to John Rojas first, and then Chris, you can close this out. John, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Josh, thanks for the time. Um, Austin last year was an entertaining team to watch, but most of the times you guys didn't come out with, you know, the results that you may look for. Um, is that after the review of the season, is that something that you put on uh, maybe the personnel and that reflects on the changes made for this season? Or is more on the tweaks uh, tactically that you can adapt for this year and have more punch and balance at the same time? Yeah, I think both. I think it's a great question. I think it's both. I think Again, looking back, when, when you don't have a striker for, for majority of the year, that, that provides challenges. When your left back goes down early in, a, in the season, the second game, it's, it, and the center mid's not available for, for at any point, there is some challenges that we didn't really expect to see. Um, you know, and, and those things we faced and we, we dealt with as best we, we could. Having said that, as the season went on, you know, as, as we reflected and looked at it, there's, there's certainly some more balance that we need to, to play with and have a little bit more, more understanding of our positional game so that we're not as exposed as we were last year. We gave up a lot of goals in transition um, in, in various stages of, of phases of play. So those are things we've really worked hard on in, in preseason and we've seen good, good rewards and, and certainly the way that we've started the preseason, some of our actions against these teams, very different opponents, I think has given us, um, you know, certainly good good belief of, of what we're bringing and how we've introduced it to the guys. The execution has been pretty solid as well. Scoring goals is, is always going to be important. We want to score goals so that we can win games, but we also, we have to be able to defend properly. And you know, I think those things will go hand in hand. We got to score goals. We, we got to prevent goals, but um, looking for consistency in our performance is going to be key. Chris, go ahead, close this up. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about uh, the announcement that you signed uh, Charlie Asensio. What stood out about him during the preseason, and um, you know what role, if any, do you expect that that he'll play through as this as this year progresses? Um, yeah, we're delighted to have Charlie uh, signed signed with us, and and he's he's a player that's going to learn you know a great deal of, of what it looks like in the professional world, and um, good left footed player can can play certainly as a left back. We use him at one point as a left wing, but good technically and, and, and has a good, certainly a good understanding of the game. And I think those things go, go well with what we're trying to do as with any young player, it will take time to get fully up to speed with how the league works. And, and we'll have to try to find ways to supplement minutes for him, but um, we're happy to have him sign. Do you feel like he fills out like that left back spot? I know you guys were looking to maybe add some fullback depth and Claudia mentioned that, that he might be working on something. Is that, you know, perhaps a sign that, that you guys aren't working on anything anymore, or is that still something that a spot that you feel like you could, you could fill on this roster? Yeah, I think it's, it's a, it's a spot that we can continue to look at it and, and, and make some, uh, some additions, but there's, there's also other areas that, that we'll keep our eye on as well. And, and uh, having a, a spot open does allow us to see how things unfold in the first couple months of the season to, to really address any needs, but um, that's certainly one possibility. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, Sebastian. Um, yeah, I was just wondering about uh, what makes you and Alex Ring play together uh, so well, and if you could tell me a little bit about your relationship and how that's developed off the field as well. Emily, you're on mute. Yes. 
Él quiere saber cuál es tu relación con Alex Ring y qué piensas tú que los hace que ustedes tengan la relación tan buena como la tienen ahorita. Bueno, sí. Primero que nada, un buen día para todos. Eh, no, la relación con Alex es muy buena. Desde el primer momento que yo llegué, la verdad que él fue uno de los líderes el cual me incorporó muy bien al grupo, entonces pegamos una muy buena relación con él y bueno, después hace que, que la relación que tenemos afuera del campo o dentro del campo sea mucho más fácil y bueno, la verdad que nos sentimos muy bien jugando juntos y, y bueno, eh, obviamente que ustedes lo ven cuando nosotros jugamos juntos no entendemos muy bien a la perfección y bueno, eh, espero que también sirva para, para todo el grupo. He said one of the things that made the relationship as good as it is now is that when he first came in, he was one of the leaders that let him in and just made him feel more at home. And that not even just in soccer, they have a good relationship outside of soccer as well. And they just feel comfortable with each other. And that shows clearly because you guys see the relationship that they have. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Let's, let's go to Roger Wallace from KXAN. Roger. Hey, Sebastian, I'm curious uh, how exciting it is to be in the opener since you joined the team, you know, midseason last year, they were already going, but to be not only in an opener, but an opener at home with all the excitement around this program here in, uh, in Austin. ¿Cómo te sentís de que vas a poder jugar en el juego que va a abrir la temporada? ¿Cómo se siente? Porque ya ves que la temporada pasada veniste en medio de la temporada, entonces él solo quiere saber cómo te sentís que ya va a empezar la temporada, vas a estar jugando en el primer juego. Bien, bien. Eh, la verdad que contento, contento de, bueno, eh, de empezar una, una temporada acá en, en, en este club, eh, poder hacerlo en casa, que eso es, es muy importante para el primer partido. Y, y nada, eh, con mucha energía, positivo, tratar de, de lograr siempre los objetivos que nos ponemos a a corto plazo y bueno, eh, con, la, con la ansiedad de que, de que esto ya empiece. He said that he it feels good and he just feels happy to be able to start the season with the club and even better that it's at home and obviously being at home it makes him feel better and he said that they're coming in with a lot of positive with a lot of positive mindset and just energy and they're just ready to achieve all the goals that they've set for the season. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Seba. Um, let's go to a face we haven't seen for a while, Eric Goodman, and he's got a fresh haircut. Eric, please um, feel free to ask this question. Good to be back uh, on the Zoom. Um, Sebastian, some of the uh, the very top stars in MLS right now um, are like your age and also like yourself from Argentina, your, uh, Tati Castellanos, uh, Zela Rayan, Reynoso. Um, do you view yourself as someone who's going to join that class potentially and, and be one of the, the very best players from Argentina? Um, and if, do you notice any similarities between yourself and some of them? And then uh, after that, real quick, I wish I was hoping you could uh, set some, uh, if you could uh, let us know what your goal celebration from the uh, friendly against Atlas, the uh, hand sign, what that means. Yo solo quería que supieras que hay algunas, hay muchas estrellas en el MLS que son de tu misma edad y también son de Argentina. Quiero saber que si tú te ves siendo parte de esa clase y parte de los mejores que están ahorita de MLS, que también son de Argentina. Ojalá, ojalá, ojalá pueda lograr lo que lograron ellos. <coughs> sé que, que ellos hacen más tiempo que están en la liga, llevan un, un tiempo de, de adaptación. Pero, pero bueno, ojalá pueda ser como ellos, lograr lo mismo que lograron, estar con una, con una estabilidad, poder jugar, eh, conseguir cosas importantes como lo consiguieron ellos. Y obviamente que ese es uno de los objetivos que tengo yo. Después obviamente eh, necesitamos de todos un poco para poder salir todos juntos adelante. He said that he hopes that he can be like them and he knows that they have more experience in being in MLS than he has. But one of his goals is to be at the top as one of the best MLS players. And that is from Argentina as well. Also, I didn't catch the second thing that you said. Sorry. Sorry, the, uh, the goal celebration. He did a, a hand signal. I was just uh, wondering if you could explain what, what, what it means. 
él quiere saber que si puedes describir la celebración que tú haces cuando, cuando haces un gol, porque él vio que haces algo con tus manos, entonces él quería saber si puedes describir por qué haces eso. No, bueno, porque ya algunos deben saber que, que dentro de poco voy a ser papá de nuevo, <coughs> se agranda la familia, entonces como somos cuatro, hago el signo del cuatro y lo señalo para, para estar en la celebración con mi familia. Gracias. He said that he puts up the four because his wife is pregnant and so they're going to have another child. So they're going to be a family of four. So he puts up the four to show that they're a family of four. They're going to be soon. Muchas gracias y felicidades. Muchas gracias. Take a next question from Laura at Telemundo. Laura, go ahead. Está muteada. There you go. <laughs> Qué pena. Eh... Bueno, sabemos que empezaste la temporada a mitad de temporada, obviamente, eh, y pues vimos jugarte un poco, ¿no? Porque va a tomar tiempo el adecuarte. ¿Qué esperan ver los hinchas de los TNFC en esta temporada de Sebastián Di Rusi que no vieron en la temporada pasada? Bueno, eh, tratar de mejorar lo que hice en, la, en lo que me tocó jugar en la temporada pasada. Eh, creo que, que va a haber más partido. Eh, más rodaje también y bueno eh, pero lo que pongo siempre por delante es el equipo eh, obviamente que el equipo es lo primordial y obviamente que después lo que hagan distintos jugadores también va a ser importante para nosotros pero bueno, el objetivo mío es tratar de, de ayudar al equipo de ser positivo, de tratar de, de siempre tirar para adelante más en los momentos difíciles que, que obviamente un equipo va a pasar y bueno, tratar de, de lograr lo que te dije antes eh, hacer una mejor temporada de la, que, de la que pasó. ¿Cómo esperas o cómo puedes manejar la racha de los no goles para este año? Bueno, yo me, eh, cuando era chico también me pasaba de por ahí pasar tres, cuatro partidos sin poder hacer el gol y, y fastidiarme, pero después cuando fui agarrando eh, más experiencia, por, por así decirlo, me fui tranquilizando, lo fui trabajando con los psicólogos también, eh, así que ya estoy acostumbrado a, eso, a ese tipo de, de situaciones, así que, así que bueno, espero que, que no pase tanto tiempo. Thank you, Laura. We can go to Jorge. Jorge, you throw up. Hola, Sebastián. Eh, felicidades por tu bebé, primeramente. Muchas gracias. Eh, oye, eh, de los jugadores que llegaron y en, en sí a la MLC, ha sido el que se ha adaptado quizá más rápido. Llegaste, fuiste a titular prácticamente luego, luego, y se ha notado que estás al nivel. ¿A qué crees que se debe esto en comparación del fútbol de Rusia y la MLS? Bueno, pero eh, va la mentalidad de cada uno. Yo vine mentalizado como que, como que no era un fútbol fácil. Entonces, por ahí el, el error que cometen algunos jugadores, por ahí el lead, ¿Qué, ¿Qué es eso? Venir a relajarse y esto es una liga que constantemente son partidos difíciles, no hay un equipo fácil, entonces eso lo, fue lo que, lo que me llevó a poder adaptarme rápido. Y el equipo, obviamente que el equipo me, me, adaptó, me hizo adaptarme muy rápido y creo que eso fue lo, lo que hizo la diferencia. En la temporada, ¿cómo ves ahora que inicia la temporada? Eh, ¿Cuáles son las metas que tienes en personales y eh, ¿Cómo ves al equipo en cara? No, bueno, lo personal ya eh, se lo dije a, a tu colega, eh, que tratar de, de mejorar la, la temporada que tuve el año pasado. Y bueno, después lo colectivo es ir partido tras partido. Obviamente que, que es un año, va a ser un año muy largo. Y entonces tenemos que ir a, a cortos plazos, tratar de, de ponernos metas muy cortas y de, de tratar de, de lograrlas. Y bueno, pero, pero por algo tenemos que empezar, que va a ser ahora el, el sábado y arrancar de, de la mejor manera. La última pregunta. Eh, ¿Qué sentiste, tu, tu, tu sentimiento, cuando supiste que Pochettino se iba a ir al River, ese equipo que tiene estafado en la piel? ¿Cuál fue tu sentimiento? No, bueno, la verdad que, que con, con, con Poche tengo una relación muy buena de que llegué acá y, y, y le fui explicando un, un par de cosas que que bueno, tenía que, que saber antes de ir a, a, a un club muy, muy importante como, como es River en Sudamérica. Y la verdad que me, me puse muy contento cuando, cuando él fue para River. Así que nada, eh, como se lo dije a él, le deseo lo mejor y espero que, que le vaya muy bien. 
la última. The last one, please. Uh, Jorge, we got to move on, Jorge. I'm sorry. We have to move on. Thank you. Gracias. Um, Paco Fuentes with Univision. Paco. Gracias, Tony. Igual, felicidades. Oye, Muchas hermano, eh, te, te comenzaré con algo, citando algo que, que me dijo Diego Coca eh, previo al partido contra Atlas. Y le preguntaba yo, ¿cómo se le enfrenta al el campeón mexicano? ¿Cómo se le enfrenta ahora a un equipo de la MLS? Y él me decía, con cuidado, Paco, con mucho cuidado. Eh, te repito esto preguntándote, ¿es así como se sienten eh, el Austin FC en este arranque de temporada? ¿Cómo están el, las palabras en el vestidor anímicamente? ¿Se habla eh, que el resto de los equipos de la MLS deben de tener cuidado con el Austin FC? Sí, tal cual, tal cual. Eh, creo que vamos a ser un equipo muy duro, más en casa. Eh, creo que somos un equipo totalmente renovado, con muchísima energía. Eh, se lo ven los entrenamientos, se lo ven en, en el camarín también. La verdad que somos un equipo muy más unido de que por ahí éramos el año pasado. Y, y nada, sí, eh, nos van a tener que enfrentar con mucho cuidado porque la verdad que vamos a ser un equipo, eh, lo que yo veo adentro, muy fuerte. Y in, últimamente, in, internacionalmente, di, dame tu percepción del Austin FC. Eh. Eh, con, con colegas, con compañeros que, que tienes tú, futbolistas en otros países ¿qué se, ha, ¿qué se habla de la MLS en otros países? y principalmente entre ustedes, entre jugadores este, eh, internacionalmente ¿ya está puesto ahí la MLS como una liga tan competitiva como en otros países y el Austin FC también? Sí, sí, sí tal cual, yo siempre lo hablo con los chicos de, de Argentina, más que nada que, que la mayoría que está jugando en Argentina no quiere dar el salto a Europa, sino que quiere venir a la MLS, por algo debe ser si vos te pones a fijar en los últimos tiempos de los últimos 10 jugadores 5 o 6 de Argentina vinieron para la MLS entonces quiere decir que la liga está haciendo las cosas muy bien, que está creciendo y después el Austin FC también, eh, es el, va a ser el segundo año, está en crecimiento y yo creo que va por buen camino hasta Neymar dijo que podría retirarse aquí. Bueno, ojalá le va a venir bien al fútbol, al fútbol, al fútbol de Estados Unidos, a la MLS, de lo que estamos hablando recién. Cuando, cuanto mejores jugadores vengan a la liga, mejor para la liga y, y mejor para nosotros también, porque vamos a tener una, una grande competitividad. Gracias. Paco, thank you. Um, we'll go to John Rojas. John, can you identify the outlet that you're with, please? Sure, Ryan, thanks. Uh, jugador franquicia. Uh, okay. Thanks. Seba, gracias por el tiempo. Eh, dos rápidas. Del proyecto que te presentaron Austin así cuando decidiste venir y hoy, ¿qué has visto en movimiento? ¿Qué has visto que ha cambiado? ¿Qué has visto que se ha generado con eso? Y segundo, en lo táctico, ¿qué es lo que más aprendiste en esos 16, 17 partidos que ya tuviste en la liga? Sí, el, el, el proyecto va, va en camino. Eh, es un proyecto a... a a largo plazo creo que, que vamos en crecimiento, vamos muy bien. Y después obviamente que lo táctico, gracias a Dios, tenemos un entrenador que, que constantemente nos está encima para, para ir mejorando, o sea, lo, lo, lo futbolístico, o sea, lo extra futbolístico, eso la verdad que a un jugador le es muy importante. Y sí, obviamente que lo, en lo táctico he aprendido muchísimas cosas también. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. We'll go to Jim Bertuno with the Associated Press. Jim, please. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a simple question. Uh, Austin FC really struggled to, to score last season, to score goals. What held this team back last year in that effort, and what's going to change? Dijo que Austin FC tuvo un tiempo difícil de goles, obviamente. ¿Y qué piensas tú que ustedes han cambiado o deberían de cambiar para que, para que eso cambie y puedan tener más goles esta temporada? Sí, bueno, lo estamos, lo, lo estamos practicando en, en lo que fue la pretemporada, tratar de, de ocasionar más chances de goles, de, de tratar de, de llegar con más gente al área y tratar de, de que si no entran no, 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 no ponernos nerviosos, sino que seguir intentando, seguir intentando, que obviamente... Eh, va a entrar más pelota de lo que, que por ahí fallamos el año pasado, pero obviamente que la temporada apenas va a, a comenzar este sábado y bueno, espero que, que sea mejor que, que la temporada pasada. 
he said that they have been practicing during preseason and they have been really trying to get into the mentality of not getting nervous when they can't score and to just keep trying, keep trying till they get it. And they've just been trying to get into the mentality and the season's barely starting. So that they're hoping that this season they will look a lot better. Great. Thank you so much. That